Hi everybody, it's uh, Richard again. It's the 15th of November, Sunday. Thought I'd do another video to show what I've been up to recently. Haven't done a great deal of work to the car, but I've done little bits and pieces that you might find interesting. So here it goes. Alright, starting off around the back. Sorry about the sunlight today, but it's a bit of a, a low sun. As you can see, it's been a bit wet around here recently. Right, I pointed out before about my idea of putting the battery chargers on the top of this rear battery box here. I think I showed the frame that I'd made up to hold all of these chargers and just one charger that I stripped down. Well now I'll strip down all eight of them and bolt them onto the steel frame and obviously bolt the frame to the battery box cover. I've got a Perspex cover that I've made up here um, to try obviously stop anybody sticking their hands in here. <coughs> so, so hopefully uh, get me through any approval process that I need later on when it comes to putting the car back on the road. That's going to be fixed on the top here with a couple of wing nuts, uh, just so I can obviously unscrew it. Just a few bits of the uh, plastic that I used as a template for the gearbox is glued together at the moment. Uh, not come out particularly neat, so I might end up replacing that eventually, but that's the idea. Just a plastic cover that sits on the top of the box. I'll just uh, lift this up. Lay it on the back of the seat like that. As you can see, I've um, got all the batteries laid out here. I've left the cables the original length for the moment. This one obviously plugs into the that point there. Uh, the cables are all the original length. Um, obviously, I'll end up shortening these power cables eventually because I won't get them too warm, and there's no sense of having them as long as that. So once another process works properly, I'll uh, cut them back and and secure them to the top of the box. They can't flap around anywhere and keep them well out of the way of any heat coming from these electronic components in here. So there's all eight chargers. Seven of these will be used to charge the traction batteries and the eighth one will be used at the moment to charge the main 12 volt car battery that's used for the control circuits. Uh, I've hinged the lid now, put in my little pop up. There you go. Um, we've got five batteries in here with the clamps here, wooden clamps to stop these batteries moving around and the metal clamps fit on top of all the batteries as I've shown before. Um, that fan there sucks fresh air into here, 12 volt supply, it's an old com uh, computer cooling fan and there's one out here that hopefully will suck the gases out and down to the bottom of the car during a charging period. I've extended the lead that I need to, as you can see, to various batteries. Obviously, I'll be numbering these batteries eventually, corresponding to the charger, so I can easily trace which charger or which battery is playing up, if any at all. Um, so that's about that. Now it's into the back here, as you can see. One over there, one over there. Um, I've also got a little stabiliser I can engage to stop it falling back too far if I need to. There's obviously one over that side as well. Um, drilled a hole in the front here, or in the back, sorry. Um, I've got some nice long power cables that go from here down to the, into the well, down through the floor of the vehicle. It's in some plastic covenant hosing that goes along the bottom of the car. Uh, where the tunnel is, I've actually made some brackets uh, across the tunnel so it sits over them to the front of the car. This cable is actually a bit um, sturdy, a bit stiffer than the one that um, came off the fork truck. Um, it's the best I could get my hands on at the moment. So that will carry the current from front to back where it doesn't need to be, t be too much movement, um, no real tight joints. So I'll do the one, this one will put it somewhere under here and I'll see the other one onto that one there. I'll link these all into series and obviously there's uh, two more at the front that are in the traction circuit. So that's coming along reasonably well. What I've also done is around the side here fitted a charging socket. Um, I intend to fit a small magnet on here, this area and one on the side here to actually hold it shut it doesn't take much pressure to open it and obviously I need to put a switch inside here um, that will obviously detect when the door is open so that you can't get no control to actually drive the car away. Uh, I was originally thinking about just having it 
that whenever the fans are running, you couldn't drive. But that would mean you've actually turned the power off, come into this socket. Uh, lead could still be plugged in, fan would not be running, and I could drive away. So obviously, ideally, I need to make sure it actually works when the actual that is open and shut, rather than just when there's actually power going through. It's a slight change of tack on that one at the moment. Uh, coming around the side. I've actually got the accelerator pedal fitted now. Uh, I've changed the spring, as I said before, so it doesn't take a lot of pressure to move it at all. Possibly not enough, so I might end up putting the original spring back in again and seeing how we go. And obviously the brake pedal is still fitted there. This particular pedal is actually um, just uses a moving iron to actually um, proportionally change the power going into the control box, as I'll show in a minute. So it's a bit different to the pod, uh, pot box idea. It's actually got uh, three or four cables coming from it for the bulkhead. Coming around to the front, this is going to be a bit of a shock for you guys that all these, use all these electronic components. What I've got here is the L-shaped panel that I showed you from the forklift a while ago. Um, I'm aware that I've got to mount this off the shaft of the vehicle because any straight uh, voltages will obviously affect the 12 volt circuit. So I've lifted this lot off here, off of the aluminium panel, and mounted it on a large piece of wood and obviously bracketed it into the front of the car. So this is nice and sturdy now. I cannot, can't move that for for trying. What I've had to do is to uh, just move these fuses around the side. They were originally higher up on the panel. The reason I've had to cut the panel up is because I couldn't get the bonnet shut because there was restriction on space. I've got some control fuses down here that are primarily for the forklift control, so I'm going to have to go through and work out which ones I don't need. I've had to cut approximately 20 wires that went from this half of the panel to that half of the panel. So here's all my wires that I need to rejoin. Some of this circuitry is to do with the braking as well. And obviously I won't be using the two, one of the two types of braking you had on the, on the full truck, which is actually brake for the gears. But what I would obviously be trying to do is use the power out of my motor to try and recharge the batteries. But that's uh, something to think about in the future. Um, so what I've done in the second one is this is the original aluminium plate around here. I basically bolted this through the uh, wood and then obviously bolted the wood to, an appro to appropriate brackets. So that sort of gives you an idea of the amount of space. Obviously um, in the normal control gear that you now use, it's no bigger than that bit. And I've obviously got a far more bit of weight to carry around. The idea being if I do get this thing on the road and get it all legal and I feel that I can justify spending an additional 500 quid plus, or sorry, 500 pounds plus on a proper control, then obviously I might do that at a later stage, saving on weight, and obviously any concerns that this stuff, which is already about 20 years old, might not um, last very long. I'll obviously test it all out, and I can buy a new controller if it all works okay. Battery box has now got quite a bit of space, so the original battery box will probably stay. Um, this is the other half of the convoluted hosing that I mentioned to you earlier on. Underneath here, I've got the uh, big power cables coming through, the 12 volt cables coming through here. So I've got battery here that I can now charge from the charging socket, and have one here that I showed before. And these cables here are some spares that I've run up there in case I need to use them to uh, be the switch circuit from the charging socket flap. So this will come up here, and obviously I'll have to ring up a, ring up a relay that stops me getting any power when the flap is open. Having a quick look at the weight of the vehicle, so all I'm missing out the front now being basically the 12 volt control battery. Just pumped all the tyres up, they've gone a bit soft. Uh, but again, that still gives me a reasonable amount of space between the arches. And the front, to be honest, still looks a bit about the same. So I'm hoping that I haven't actually weighted down the car too much. That's about it for now. Um, what I intend to do now is to try and join all these wires, these ones to here, get the control manual out, work out what I need, and go from there. I uh, still need a bit of assistance working out how it all works. I'm going to take this all out back to work using the other motor I've got and uh, test it all out there. So I'm going to take the one out of here. And see how it goes. So over the next few weeks, do a bit of shoe bits and uh, keep you all updated. And I'll speak to you all soon. Bye.